Today we're talking about the difference between chest heart rate monitors and wrist heart rate monitors and which one is better. My name is Brad. I'm from CoachParry.com where we help you become fitter, faster and stronger. And we join by our head coach, Lindsay Parry today to give you the lowdown on what heart rate monitor you should be using. If you have been around uh, us here at Coach Parry for a while, you'll know that we are huge advocates of using heart rate uh, to guide your training. And I think today we need to settle that debate. Which is better, chest strap? Or wrist-based heart rate monitors. Lindsay, we're chatting about heart rate monitors today. We've had over the last few months a lot of athletes training to heart rate, particularly around our math programs, and we get a lot of debate around weird numbers. And uh, I think let's talk about the elephant in the room. And I'm going to ask you to take a stand here. There's no, there's no grey. What is better, heart rate on a chest strap or heart rate on a wrist-based monitor? Look, there isn't any gray, to be honest. There's, there's chest heart rate. So there are, uh, and, uh, uh, so, so I'm unequivocal with a, with a choice between those two. There have been a couple of um, advancements in, in technology with a si similar technology to what they use in the wrist heart rate, but on a standalone unit that either fits under a swimming cap on the side of your head or or for running purposes and cycling purposes will go around the arm and those are um a close ish second but chest is the gold standard it is the most accurate it is the most reliable and if you're training to heart rates i feel like it's worth the investment of actually getting a very accurate chest version so that you can use and track your intensity lindsay let's just talk from a scientific perspective why is it so important i mean we talk I'll, I'll touch on why there is big differences between the two shortly but let's talk about from a data perspective why is it so important to have data that is i don't want to say usable but it is accurate in order to make training decisions or correct training decisions so look when you're training strictly to heart rate you want to be able to make two global decisions and the one decision is quite simply am i running at the right intensity right now and so if you can't rely on the data that you've been given and you don't know from one day to the next if you're actually running at the same intensity, the training is compromised, but you also can't have any comparative data. So how are you going to track if, if it's working and you're improving if from day to day you don't have any confidence that it's measuring the same thing? And I mean, I work with heart rate with almost every day and I can see who's using wrist and who's who's using chest because there's just no consistency in in the chest reading I mean in, in in the wrist reading and the second global decision you've got to make is to make decisions within training sessions around changing in intensities and I'm not even talking about interval sessions here although that's part of exactly the same discussion but if I go up a hill the longer it takes for the heart rate unit to register the change that's happened within me for the extra work that I'm doing to go up a hill, the longer I'm going to be training at the wrong intensity. So with heart rate, we've already got lag times of around 30 to 45 seconds. And those lag times increase with, with wrist units again. So that means that if you're running up a really long hill, you can go north of one minute running harder than you wanted to run. And if we do that enough times in a session, then we've completely changed the nature and point of the session that we set out to train at. Lindsay, let's talk about why the wrist-based units are, as you say, inconsistent and, and inaccurate. What, how do they work and, and why, what causes these inconsistencies? Look, the biggest difference between how the two work is that one is tracking blood flow, and that's the the, the optical units or the, the ones that you will wear on your wrist and your arm, and the other one is tracking electrical impulses that your heart makes. So, I mean, I don't think it takes rocket science to figure out that the one actually tracking what we physically, which physically causing the heart to beat at the rate it is, is, is always going to be more, more accurate. And then the problem with those optical sensors and tracking the actual flow of the heart rate, it means that any interference 
is going to compromise the reading. So interference can be as simple as light creeping in to that optical sensor. So the, the, the fit needs to be um, really snug as well as any movement between skin and the surface because in a short period of time, that optical sensor is now reading from, from two different places. So how you wear the, the wrist unit will help with the accuracy and it's important to wear that properly. So if you are using heart rate, you want about two fingers between these two wrist protrusions on, on the side of your arm. You want the straps to be away from those because as soon as they're on or near, that's going to allow light in. And you want the unit to be really nice and flat and flush. So that can't happen if it's too close to the, to the actual wrist. So we want it a little bit further back. We want a really nice snug fit so that there's very little movement of the actual unit and there isn't any light getting in. That will, of course, improve the accuracy, but it doesn't take away the inaccuracy, unfortunately. Lindsay, I think we've made a lot of people who have invested a lot of money in in sports watches that use wrist-based heart rate that they're going, well, this thing's useless. Is it a case of, you know what, toss it out, get yourself one that uh, is, is chest-based, or can you, do these devices allow you to simply buy the chest strap and then sync it to, to the device that you've got? There's, there's great use around general fitness use. So it's still going to give you a pretty good idea um, and once you know those inconsistencies are in there and you are making sure the device is is snug fit then it's probably not a bad tool to use as a tracking tool um, and also to to keep an eye on on what your intensity intensity is like however if you move into the performance here and that i'm not talking about if you're a fast runner i'm talking about if you get serious about your running and you want to use heart rate to make you a better runner and improve from wherever you are then it is worth investing in a good chest unit i mean those the, the, the and i'm going to talk in in terms of of rand here but in ter rand terms we're talking around two to two and a half thousand rand um it tends to be cheaper um, because we have to import all of these things. So if you are Europe-based, if you are um, based in, in, I suppose, Australia and New Zealand also have to import, but if you're US-based and if you're Europe-based, then those units are going to come in um, a fair bit cheaper because you're not going to be in, in paying, paying those, those import duties. But it, whatever it costs, it is well worth the investment of that extra because then you know that you are reading exactly what you want to read for general fitness, for general health, to be able to finish races. If your, your aim is to train well enough to finish races comfortably, to enjoy yourself running, then for sure, put the unit on properly and it's going to be accurate enough for you. If you get very serious about times um, and you want to use heart rate as a training tool, get the chest strap. Perfect. Lindsay, as always, great to catch up. Thanks for your time today. Absolute pleasure. Cheers, Brad. Thanks so much for watching. If you did get any value out of this, please do smash the like button. If you have any follow-up questions, feel free to pop those into the comments below as well. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button over here so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. You can also watch our most recent video over here, and you can watch our most popular video over here.